Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on Nationwide today. We are live in Abuja. I'm Hawa Salihu Adama. Our starting point today is the latest on COVID-19 vaccines. As Nigeria finalizes arrangements to roll out the COVID-19 vaccines beginning on Friday, the Minister of Health, Dr. Osagi Ehaniri, says the vaccination exercise, though a game changer, should not be regarded as the end of all other safety measures against the global pandemic. The minister was speaking at the second edition of the State House weekly briefing focusing on Nigeria's response to the COVID-19 pandemic in the last one year. State House correspondent Adamu Sambu is putting that report together and we will bring it later. Meanwhile, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Mohamed Musa Bello, has inspected the upgraded oxygen supply facility at the Idu Isolation and Treatment Center. Shwaibu Onozi Yakubu reports that the facility was upgraded to treat more severe cases of COVID-19. Going it up, you discover that this is a gauge that tells on the pressure. Briefing the FCT Minister, Acting Secretary for Health and Human Services Secretariat, Dr. Mohamed Kau, says a whole floor of the isolation and treatment center has been piped to convey oxygen directly to 72 beds, with the intention to increase the number to 100 beds in no too distant time. When the second wave of COVID-19 hit the FCT sometime towards the end of December and early January, uh, we realized that there was a need to improve on the available sp bed spaces that have piped oxygen. The minister, however, commended the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 and the Federal Ministry of Health for the assistance provided toward the upgrade of the oxygen facilities at the center. Shwaibu Onoze Yakubu, NTA News. To other matters now, water is generally said to be alive because of the balance it provides in various aspects. The importance of water in any human life cannot therefore be overemphasized. The need to strike a balance in the lives of traders in markets like the world market in Calabar through the provision of portable water as demonstrated by a humanitarian group. The Ben Aka Foundation in the fight against COVID-19 may just be up. Achibam Basi reports. The Watt Market is one of the major markets in Calabar, Cross River State. Maintaining a proper hygiene and sanitation at this market is a motivation for this humanitarian group, the Ben Akak Foundation, to drill a borehole with an effective reticulation of water for traders. This initiative amidst the COVID-19 pandemic is in collaboration with the Watt Market Association and the Calabar South Local Government Council. We are aware of the pandemic that is ravaging the world. We are aware that there is need for proper sanitation and there is need for us to proper we need to buy. Performing the groundbreaking ceremony, the paramount ruler of Calabar South his Royal Majesty, Muri Munene, Professor Hogan Itam, urged the Watt Market Association to ensure that the water is available to all the traders. It's a gift. Therefore, you must extend the benefits of the, of the gift to all your members. Let God bless him first. Give water, you give life. Some royal fathers present at the groundbreaking ceremony are elected for this gesture from the Ben Akak Foundation in Calabar, Achibobasi, NTA News. To oil and gas now, the Nigerian National Petroleum Cooperation, NMPC, and its subsidiaries are committed to the development of the $1.4 billion multipurpose industrial platform projects planned, set up to produce ammonia and ammonia phosphate under the gas industrialization strategy signed with Morocco. The group managing director of the NMPC, Mele Kolo Kiari, reiterated Nigeria's commitment to taking equity stakes in the joint venture company towards ensuring availability of sufficient gas for the success of the project. Over now to Lydia Samson. 
The agreements are to further cement the joint resolve of President Mohamed Buhari and King Mohamed VI, King of Morocco, to the development of multi-purpose industrial platform project in Nigeria, as well as other sovereign bilateral initiatives between Nigeria and Morocco. The project is structured to commercialize Nigeria's vast natural gas resources and satisfy Morocco's demand for cost-competitive ammonia. This project will positively impact agriculture, stimulate and fast track the growth of gas-based industries and consequently lead to massive job creation for our teeming youthful population. So gas is there for the first one. There's enormous resources available around and we have interest in nearly all the resources that are on ground. So gas is uh, clearly available and this project will not be stopped or will not be uh, interrupted by gas supply. The economic vibrancy introduced by the program cannot be quantified. In the process, NSIA, OCP and FEPSEN have also forged partnership which has created avenues to further broaden the scope of the collaboration. I'm delighted that our partnership has now evolved to the point of signing the joint venture agreement for the development of the ammonia and DAP plants. Stakeholders say the NNPC, as one of Africa's largest state oil and gas company, with a presence in every area of the oil and gas value chain, will no doubt play the most critical role in the realization of this landmark agreement. This is because, in addition to its exploration activities, the NNPC has power and operational interest in refining petrochemicals and products transportation as well as marketing. The Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority landmark agreements with OCP of Morocco include Aquabom State, NNPC, Gas Aggregation Company Nigeria Limited, Nigerian Content Development Monitoring Board and Fertilizer Producers and Suppliers Association of Nigeria. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. And following the resolve of the 9th National Assembly to ensure passage of a bill, that will address the challenges in the petroleum sector for overall national economic growth. The Joint National Assembly Committee on the Petroleum Industry Bill has received 15 memoranda from stakeholders in Akwaibom State at a town hall meeting in Uyo. Members of the host communities made a strong case for the involvement of all key industry players in the proposed bill. Clement Barakui has more. The petroleum industry bill has suffered several setbacks due to some perceived lapses in the bill. Representatives of the civil societies, host communities and the state government during the town hall meeting include regulatory overlaps, licenses to international oil companies to flare gas. State governments are excluded from the process of appointing members into these various committees. In Regrettably, some of the solutions we preferred did not touch the fundamental issues. The role of Nostra, the role of Nesria, the roles of the state ministries of environment and the role of the federal minister of environment continues to overlap. Chairman of the committee, Senator Sabo Naduku, said the observations were noted and will be considered in the proposed bill. So it is paramount to open the PIB make sure the necessary arrangement and adjustment are done so that the host community and the impacted community will be taken care of. A total of 15 memoranda were presented to the Joint Committee for Consideration in Uyo, Clement Barakui, NTA News. No doubt the Petroleum Industry Bill is expected to address issues of unemployment and transparency in the nation's oil and gas industry. This was the fallout of a one-day town hall meeting in Yenogwa when the Bayasu state governor played host to the delegation from the National Assembly, members, critical stakeholders, and as well as critical stakeholders of the petroleum industry. Fred Wafi has more. Governor Doye Diri decried the undue delay in the passage and implementation of the bill for about 14 years. As he urged members of the National Assembly of its passage to engender peace and development in the region and the country as a whole. The deal that brings support to Nigeria, that brings peace and to Nigeria, that brings 
Deputy Chairman as Ad Hoc Committee on Petroleum Industry Bill Victor Wukulu noted that it will foster sustainable prosperity in host communities. The Speaker of the House and the committee members are all committed that this bill must leave National Assembly latest every May. Members of the committee in company of stakeholders in the oil and gas industry visited an oil spill site at Ikarama community in Yenagua local government area of the state to assess the impact of the spill. They expressed displeasure on the delay in the passage of the bill. In Yenagua, Fred Owefie, NTA News. And we are not done with the petroleum industry bill as the Abia state governor, Okeze Ikpe says. The ongoing efforts by the Ninth National Assembly to pass the long-awaited bill is a step in the right direction towards giving host communities a sense of belonging. The governor stated this when the delegation of the Joint National Committee, National Assembly Committee on Petroleum Industry Bill visited the government house in Umahia. Kingsley Ononiu has that. The delegation led by the Chairman and Senate Committee on Petroleum Upstream Center, Governor Ibe Azun Frank Adwe Amana, some oil companies operating in the state are denying the host communities of their entitlements. It's also shocking that despite the fact that they have received unfettered cooperation from the oil industry, they have received Chairman, Senate Committee on Petroleum Upstream Sector, and the leader of the delegation, Senator Bassi, appealed to the host communities to shun all forms of facilities in order to enable them to benefit more from the passage of the Petroleum Industry Bill. We believe as the members of the National Assembly that if we are able to address the hostilities in the host uh, community, we can crash the cost of uh, or more money will come into the federation. Uh, and the host community will be given a sense of uh, belonging. Members of the Joint National Assembly Committee on Petroleum Industry Bill are in the state for oversight working visit to some of the oil producing communities in Abia State in Omaha, Kingsley and Aniwu, NTA News. And we are now ready with our earlier introduced story where we told you about the press briefing at the State House of the planned COVID-19 vaccination exercise. Since the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic in February last year, Nigeria, as at the 3rd of March this year, recorded a total confirmed cases of 156,963. Out of the number, 135,831 have been treated and discharged, while 1,939 people have died of the disease. You will agree that with the leadership of Mr. President, Nigeria has actually mounted a very robust response to this outbreak. And you know, when things go wrong in our country, we often blame government. And when they go right, we thank God. <laughs> but I think in this case, God may have walked a little bit through the leadership of our country to establish the mechanisms that have directed the robust response we've had so far. And with the arrival of nearly 4 million doses of AstraZeneca last Tuesday, arrangements are now on to roll out the COVID-19 vaccines on Friday with the frontline health workers as first beneficiaries. President Muhammad Buhari and Vice President Yemi Oshibaju are expected to be vaccinated on Saturday as a deliberate attempt at thwarting vaccine hesitancy, which is reported to be increasing worldwide. I know there are so many countries that started vaccinating before Nigeria, but if you are to inquire, you will find that a lot of them did not wait for WHO emergency uh, use uh, listing. Some of them did not wait uh, for some of the stringent regulatory uh, agencies to certify these uh, vaccines before they started using them. That is not what we're going to do in Nigeria. That is not what we have done. We've gone through a rigorous process and we're pretty comfortable that the vaccines that we're going to be rolling out in the next couple of days are going to be safe and effective.
against the virus. NAVDA Director General Professor Mojishola Adeye is reassuring Nigerians that the agency will not abdicate its responsibility of ensuring that only safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines are administered on them. The lab staff took samples and as we speak, they are working around the clock to test the vaccines. Without us saying it is okay, it cannot even be long tomorrow. So I've been working with Dr. Faisal uh, to ensure that by the end of the day or very early in the morning, we will say yes, it is okay. The Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Ihanere, maintains that it is in the interest of everyone that the whole country is vaccinated, saying no one is safe until all Nigerians are safe. Look at vaccine as a game changer. The much awaited silver bullet that should take care of COVID-19. But I must give a warning right away that it does not mean the end of all other measures. We are not going back on the non-pharmaceutical interventions or the public health measures, they must continue so that we continue to protect ourselves. Dr. Ehenere also speaks on the lessons to be learned post-COVID-19. We shall use these lessons to review the impact on our population health. We shall use it to consolidate our health system, to rebuild and especially reorganize our public health response and public health security and review the changes that we need to make in our health system so that we can respond even better in future. The third edition of the State House Media Briefing put together by the Presidential Communications Team is scheduled for next week. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Thanks, Adamu. The news of his death shook the nation and the African entertainment industry. Sadiq Daba was a household name who featured in different soaps and movies. Elizabeth Omori takes a look at the life and times of the veteran broadcaster and actor. Play any tricks on your uncle and look after the farm. Don't worry, Papa. Everything will be all right. All right. Sadiq Abubakar Daba was a Nigerian actor and broadcaster. He had his secondary education at St. Edward's Secondary School and higher degrees from many institutions, including Amadou Bello University, Zaria. He was a broadcaster with the Nigerian Television Authority. He became prominent for his role as Beatrice in the popular soap Cockcrow at Dawn, which ruled the airwaves in the 70s and 80s. He also stayed in a drama series Behind the Clouds. Then, Judah, I can assure you, you have a heavy task on your hands. Because we have over 30 brands in this country. 30 what? <laughs> 30 brands and all brewed locally. Incredible. <laughs> his struggle for life began when he announced his diagnosis of leukemia and prostate cancer in 2017 and was supported with funds raised by notable Nigerians. In 2015, Late Sadiq Daba won the African Movie Academy Award as Best Actor for his role in the movie October 1st. He also backed the title Karkunwa Nollywood by the Hausa motion picture arm of the industry. He died at the age of 69 on the 3rd of March 2021 in Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NCN. Thanks Elizabeth for that tribute to late Sadiq Daba. Now I have joining me in the studio the former executive director programs NTA, Mr. Peter Eagle. He is the veteran producer of some of the hit series on NTA that brought Sadiq Daba to limelight. Mr. Eagle was also a bosom friend of the deceased. We appreciate your coming on Nationwide today. Thank you very much. I must condole with the NTA because we've lost another NTA family. A very sad day for us indeed. You worked directly with Sadiq Daba and you were also friends. How would you describe his person? <laughs> Sadiq was so many things to so many people. And um, to try to unravel all that Sadiq represents will take a long time. But he truly was a passionate person. And um, I knew him first as a friend when he was in customs in Kano. Then later he joined broadcasting in Kaduna and was brought to Sukutu where I was a pioneer member and head of drama. And because there were not too many actors around, uh, most of the plays that I wrote and produced, I had to search inwards for my actors. 
and Sadiq, who was in the news and current affairs department, uh, I realized the, the moment I saw him that he was a strong potential. So I used him in most of my productions. And the one that stood up mostly before Cochrane done was Moment of Truth, where, where he played a doctor. Uh, before Kokro came, and um, he played a, the truant young boy of the son of a, a Bello. But it shows you the, 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 the rich uh, uh, ambience of what he can do as an actor. From being a doctor in one movie, mm. to being a child in another movie, mm. to being the quintessential uh, elderly yes. inspector in, in the October 1, and of course a presenter par excellence. So Sadiq was so much to so many people. And uh, we, we were together for many, many years, from the Sukutu days closely mm. um, as my uh, uh, member of my cast. Mm. And when later I had to go to Josh to do Kokoro, of course, I dragged him along. And many people didn't know that. In casting for Kokoro, I started with Sadiq. Oh, okay. um, I first got, well, we, we knew the family of Bello had four, four members, the father, the mother, two children, a boy and a girl. Mm. I got the boy first, that was Sadiq. Okay. And now, to build around Sadiq, who would look like him as a father, would work well with him as a sister and then the mother. So that's how strong it was, me and Sadiq. And um, years later, when we now uh, had come back from being General uh, uh, and Tienugu, and Ben Bruce challenged me to say, look, I'm tired of hearing Kokra, don't give me something new. Mm -hmm. And we started and came up with AM Express. Again, I brought Sadiq back because I knew there was a, a strong presenter. And I linked him with Ginka Craig, if you remember, mm -hmm. and uh, others. But um, outside that, we were strong family friends. There was no event that I organized, whether my children's marriage or my wife's birthday, that Sadiq was not present. Sir, he belonged to the pioneer generation of actors and TV personalities Indeed. in Nigeria. And was relevant till the very end, even when he had to be part of the Eagle's Wings, just recently premiered. Okay. What would you say made him tick? Well, um, I hate to think, say that um, 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 we had a team in Sokoto. Sometimes in Envy they called us the Sokoto Mafia. But it was myself, Madaze, uh, Dala Dibako, Sadiq Daba, and uh, a few others. And somehow we were able to build up an attitude to work that held us together. And every member of that team became a big success because of that attitude to work. Yeah. There was time to play. But it was also time to work. And whatever you were given to do, you put your heart and soul into it. And that's exactly what Sadiq did. When he played, he played very well. But when it came to time to work, Sadiq could not be beaten. He had that attitude to um, seriousness and putting his heart and soul into whatever he did. Take it that that takes us to his legacies. What do you think he would want to be remembered for? Well, um, I, I, I always say that we broadcasters, especially most of us who are producers and directors, mm. we give all our life and soul making people happy That's at the true. expense of our families. So I, talking to him, I know that one element that he wants to be known for is that he had a happy family. Okay. Um, his wife, Bolaji, a long-suffering soul because half the time, like my wife, uh, we are always out there on location and they had to stay alone, look after the children and the family. Mm. So each time we spoke, Sadiq always would say, for me, my family is number one. Then, of course, his performance as an actor. Um, he don't so much. Unfortunately, like many of us, you get remembered for one item. And if, in spite of all the roles he played, Beatrice always stands out as that quintessential role that he represented. There's so much to talk about. So much. So, so much. much to talk about that time wouldn't permit us. Oh, we truly appreciate your being part of Nationwide today and talking about late Sadiq Daba. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Moving on, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has mourned the demise of Sadiq Daba, describing him as an iconic Trespian broadcaster and a giant of his time. In a statement signed by his special assistant, Shegu Adeyemi, the minister said the death of Mr. Daba is a huge loss to the entertainment industry and the nation in general. He lauded the pioneering role of the deceased along with his contemporaries in nurturing the Nigerian movie industry to its present towering status as the second largest movie industry in the world. Lai Mohammed recalled his attendance of the premiere 
of the Nollywood Nigerian Air Force movie Eagle Wings, in which Mr. Daba made a cameo appearance in spite of his health challenges. The deceased was a role model who created a path for many movie stars who rose from obscurity to stardom. Lai Mohammed condoles with the family of the deceased, his colleagues and the movie industry in general, saying his legacy is assured because of his monumental success and his chosen field. He also prayed God to grant repose to the soul of the deceased and give his family the courage to bear the irreparably lost. Let's now take you to our Lagos Center where Adeni Taiwo is standing by at the residence of the late Sadiq Daba, Daba, the TV icon, where people have been condoling with the family. Adeni, if you can hear me, what is the mood at your present location? Daba, the TV icon. Uh, thank you. Our, uh, let me start by saying that earlier in the day, I was at um, Agege Central Mosque Cemetery, Morikas, where the remains of our late Sadiq Daba was interred, committed to Mother Earth. But now I'm in his living room, and uh, just like it was from uh, earlier, in the, earlier in the day, we have mourners still trooping in to, you know, commiserate with the family and showing their, you know, uh, paying their respect to, 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 to the late Thespian. Um, you know, as someone who was uh, an expert at cheating death, both on the screen as actors and off the screen as a survivor of leukemia. Uh, many people were shocked at the news of his passing. But then the mood, uh, while it is sober, uh, it is also one that is not that gloomy because I think people are comforted with the fact that he led a good life that touched many. You look around, you still see mourners, I mean, uh, sympathizers uh, who, who are here to you know, uh, commiserate with the family. But I also have um, the widow. I have, the, I have the widow, I have the widow of, uh, of the later Thespian uh, seated right beside me, and she's just going to talk to us briefly about the man, Sadiq Daba, the way she, she knew him. Ma, the old world is, uh, the old world is watching. Uh, they, they want to hear you talk about your husband. Who, who was he? Sadiq Daba is a jovial person. He's also a disciplinarian, but... Um, Overall, is a strong and resilient man, very versatile actor, I must say. We all love him. He's the life of the party. Uh, in his house, his word is law. That's why I call him a disciplinarian. He's a man that um, you would love to have as a friend, because when he supports you, he supports you right to the end. That's who Sadiq Daba is. I'm sure so many Nigerians who came to know uh, Sadiq Daba will agree with his widow. That is it uh, from this end. Uh, we'll be handing over now to Kain Day in our Lagos Network Center for continuation of Nationwide. Nigerian Television Authority. We hope that um, the soul over the disease will, be rest, will rest well in the bosom of the Lord. Moving on now, the Socioeconomic Rights and Act Accountability Project, SERAP, has engaged some media practitioners in Lagos on the use of advocacy, amongst other means of tackling corruption in the country. Olumide Guntala has details. Corruption has become the bane of development in many countries, especially in Africa. This explains why President Muhammad Buhari, right from assumption of office, made it clear that war against corruption is a must-win battle resulting in recovery of some looted funds and national assets. This presidential stance against graft has challenged relevant agencies to step up their activities. And in support of this, the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, took its campaign to Lagos to seek more holistic way of tackling the challenge. On our part, we will continue in our advocacy at government to ensure that Nigeria is governed within the various legal frameworks, the constitution being the principal part of that, and that socioeconomic rights of Nigerians are enforced. But on the part of government, it is committing that will, that sincerity in what they do. Sarah, Deputy Director, explained that governance is a collective responsibility that requires effective communication between government and the governed. An appeal to all anti-corruption agencies to ensure that all allegations of fraud 
are well investigated across all sectors of the economy, while corporates must be brought to justice. In Lagos, Ulum de Gutola, NT News. The need to build capacity of secondary school teachers in line with health hazard and risk factors associated with students' involvement in the use of substances formed part of discussion at a six-day enlightenment program in Lagos. Abolodi Salami reports that school administrators are drawn from 18 colleges were reminded of their roles as teachers to sensitize the students on the need to stay on the side of the law. With the spirit of youth unrest, violence and acts of criminality reported daily in the news, governments at all levels have continued to strategize on finding a lasting solution to this growing concern. They mix doctor with this drink. In lending their voice to tackle the issue from the four walls of classroom, teachers and counselors were thinking through the rudiments of a comprehensive evidence-based substance use prevention training for secondary school students. The training which focuses on how teachers can disabuse the minds of students from peer pressure explain the roles of parents in nurturing their words. We want to build their capacity so that they will be able to identify those risk factors that will expose the students to the use of psychoactive substances. And if, if, if they don't have this understanding, it becomes difficult for, for them to intervene. While placing premium on the importance of teachers and their contributions to human development, facilitators urged them to practice more of personal communication technique skills for substance use prevention and classroom management of inappropriate behavior. Why I so much love this program is the aspect they are hammering on. Prevention, which is better than care. How to prevent it. And what is happening globally now, you will see that there is a high rate of depression going on. A lot of people are depressed. This is actually leading to youth engaging in different biases. It will help me to impart, to actually use the knowledge gotten from here to help youth in general. The consensus of participants is that addressing substance issues among youths must be a collaborative effort between the government and the public. In Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTA News. Meanwhile, the U.S. Consulate in Lagos is offering students access to accurate, comprehensive and current information about educational institutions in the United States. The U.S. Ambassador to Nigeria, Mary Leonard, says a center located at Slum to School Innovation Hub, Lekki, is open to all Nigerians. The Window Hub, the first of seven in Nigeria, provides free counseling sessions as well as free outreach to secondary schools and universities in the country. The U.S. Consulate in Lagos, who is partnering with Slum to School Innovation Hub, says the center is designed for Nigerians who are academically qualified to study in the U.S. and are taken through the various steps of applying to the school. It's a great place where uh, Nigeria people in this community can come and learn about studying in the United States. People can come and participate in engaging programs in this in this wonderful institution, and uh, that our our our, our uh, alumni of our exchange programs, such as Otto, who is a past Mandela Washington Fellow, can have a platform in which to uh, launch their activities. Structures are put in place, responsibilities taken by, by the federal government, and literally all stakeholders come to the table to see that what we have today as Human resource is transformed into a gold mine that will transform not just Nigeria, but the African continent. The U.S. Consulate further reiterates its resolve to provide quality education, entrepreneurial skills, and technological support to enable Nigerians realize their full potential. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. Nationwide continues after this break. Do stay with us. you wonderful news. The village headmaster is coming back to your screen. Mowiri Abimio Wiri. Teacher Teacher 
je bo na better school for last gidi no be only on a rugged yeah yes school for ija bi na no i don't know for you say it's called oja village kagesi we know how to talk at all i do and i know that even you too you are getting a lot of others too. Hey, we are trying to shao sweep her leg out she was standing there sweep it I love you so much. And how did I give you the impression that I was interested in that position? 50 year anniversary. You mean anniversary? I mean, it's not I talk with that now. Not for me. Not for me because of me. Life is a game. We are cool. We are trendy. Energy moves us. Sports is our game, our oxygen. Because with the round leather we ball, we hustle. All over the land, north and south, we are united in the positive glory. We are encapsulated by high fill. We live for the game. It's game time. Showing on MTN Network every Saturday at 4.30 p.m. loss in London last weekend, Burnley will take on another North London club as they seek to get back to winning ways. This Saturday, it's Burnley versus Arsenal on the Premier League Live, showing on the network service of the NTA from 1pm. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Axis Bank, Papai Jebu, Lipton and Close Up in association with Goal.com. Thanks for rejoining Nationwide. The Minister of Works and Housing, Baba Tunde Raji Fashola, has expressed the federal government's determination to speedily complete all road projects awarded across the country. The minister stated this while inspecting ongoing reconstruction of some federal roads in Adamawa State. Abdullahi Ayuba Dalwa reports. Construction of 103 km Numan Jalingo Road and 46.3 km Numan Cham Road, as well as 112 km Mayo Belwa Jada Ganye Tongo Road in Adama State, are going on steadily. The roads, when completed, are expected to reduce some of the difficulties faced by the motorists, as well as enhance economic growth in the areas. We appeal to the government that uh, they should uh, 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 emphasize to construct the road quickly. So what the government has done was is a very good thing and we hope it will come up with so many agencies. The Minister of Works and Housing, Baba Tunderaji Fashola, who was represented by the Director Highways North East Zone, Federal Ministry of Works and Housing, Celestine Shausu, expressed satisfaction with the quality and pace of the work, promising to collaborate with the North East Development Commission for speedy completion of the projects. There is no challenge of funding for this project. We urge the contractor to move on. The contractors handling the respective road projects promise sustained effort to complete work 
within specifications. In Yola, Abdullah Yubadalwa, NTA News. The NATO reverses the curriculum for training engineers in Nigeria to think out of the box has re-echoed in Good Morning Nigeria. Lydia Sampson reports that the guests were unanimous but with the right training backed by requisite government policies, Nigerian engineers will excel. Engineers and engineering play critical roles in the attainment of sustainable development of the planet. This is because every aspect of humanity is directly or indirectly linked with engineering. The guests also experienced engineers call for the harnessing of new technologies in training fresh engineers. They decried the deployment of obsolete equipment and training engineers and expecting them to compete favorably in the ever-evolving planet. Government must, I use the word must, deliberately encourage is indigenous engineers and engineering. You need to grow it deliberately. Anywhere you see engineering growing is deliberately being grown by government. And people stay in their beautiful homes, beautiful cars, flying jets. Let them know that what they are enjoying is the product of engineering. Somebody can imagine, somebody can send their satellites into the air and then from there we're picking. That's all engineering. Yeah. So we begin to create the imagination of the young ones to think outside the box and create things. That is what engineering today is all about. To keep into the global clamor for positioning engineers who held the planet, they reiterate the need for more recognition and patronage of indigenous engineers. They also called for more deliberate and consistent policies of inclusion of women engineers to further encourage them to join the male colleagues in repositioning Nigerian engineering sector and Nigeria at large in Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. And it's time to take you to our Meduguri Network Centre to join Abubakar with more reports on Nationwide. It's over to you. It's nice to see you, Hawa. Borno State Government is set to establish drip irrigation projects across the 27 local government areas in the state. This was brought to the fore when Governor Babagana Umar Azulum inspected a pilot project in Mafar town on his way to Dikwa and Gala local government areas. Mohamed Goni completes the story. Resuscitation of agricultural activities across Borno is one of the 10 fact development agenda of the Zulum led administration as part of efforts to boost the social economic activities of the citizenry. Construction of drip irrigation facilities is ongoing in Mapa, one of the two areas selected for the pilot project alongside Magumeri local government. In order to provide adequate food security to the people of Borno State, government has intended to embark upon a very serious irrigation program. And therefore, we are willing to establish irrigation systems in all the 27 local government areas of the state with a view to supporting dry season irrigation farming. Here in Dikwa also, we are ready to construct a lot of ad dams so that people can use the ad dams. Governor Zulum, who was conducted around the ongoing work site, the success of the project in the two areas will fave the way for replication in other local governments and further charge the officials to consider areas with low rainfall level. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. And back here in the state capital, Borno State Governor Professor Babagana Umar Azulum has directed Borno Supply Company, a government-owned filling station, to ensure daily supply of 5,000 liters of premium motor spirit towards addressing the perennial fuel scarcity being experienced across the state. The governor has been visiting filling stations to, in Meduguri to monitor the sale of the commodity at an official price of 161 naira per liter. Here are more details of the story. Governor Babagana Umar Azulum was not only at Bosco Supply Company, but had also visited other private filling stations within the state capital where fuel is allegedly being hoarded. Most filling stations in Meduguri have been under lock for the past one week a situation that has caused pains on motorists and other residents. The scarcity is suspected to have been caused by holders who expect to make increased profits in the midst of rumored plans for increase in pump price by the federal government, a speculation that the NNPC has dismissed last weekend. Borno State Governor Professor Babagana Umar Azulum said government is working to resolve the lingering fuel scarcity in Meduguri within the next few days. 
We shall research the tax force and distribution of cents and distribution of oil. We shall ensure that all those commodities that are being supplied to the marketers are properly distributed to commuters. The scarcity has come at a time when Meduguri has been without power supply for over one month after Boko Haram blew up power lines, cutting the prognostic capital from the national electricity grid. You're on to Nationwide from Meduguri. Let's now return to Hawa in Abuja for more reports. Very well, Abubakar. Thank you. The Zamfara State Government is to offer a full scholarship to any of the recently released 279 students of the Government Girls Second Science Secondary School, Jangabe, who successfully graduate from the college so they can study at any tertiary institution of their choice. The Speaker of the House of Assembly said this while presenting the girls to their parents in Jangabe town. Jamilu Ibrahim has more. In undergone medical checkup and counseling, the 279 released students of Government Girls Science Secondary School, Jengibe, and Zamfara State left Government House Gusau for their school. The students received a rousing welcome by members of the community at the Emir of Mafara, Alejibello Barumo, alongside their parents, converged on the school premises to anxiously receive them. Some of the parents could not control their emotion as they cited their lost but found children. <laughs> Speakers on the State House of Assembly, Nasuru Maazo Magaria, who presented the girls to the royal father, enjoined the parents not to be discouraged by the unfortunate incident, as government has adequately planned to fortify security in all the schools across the state. He said the Amfara State Government is to award full scholarship to any of the students who successfully completes the school for them to further their education to higher level. Wife of Zamfara State Governor Haja Aisha Bello Muhammad, who witnessed the departure of the girls, said they have been found medically and psychologically fit to reunite with their families. Oh, Alhamdulillah, they are fine. They've been checked uh, by all medical teams and they've checked for any sexual violence and there is none of that sort. And that uh, gladdens my heart, honestly. The girls are to remain with their parents till the reopening of boarding schools in Zamfara State, which were closed shortly after their abduction. In Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. And days after the release of the abducted students of Government Science College, Kagara, and others in Rafi local government area of Niger State, though still basking in the euphoria of their safe return, life for the residents of the Asian town is however far from being the same. Musa Mikhail, just back from the area, has a situation report. This is the beautiful town of Kagara. For the people of this town, life has not been the same ever since the kidnap of the government science secondary school students. The popular saying, every parting is a form of death, as every reunion is a form of heaven. This was the feeling when victims of government science secondary school Kagara and others were reunited with their immediate families after more than 10 days in captivity. No Shaibu is one of the victims released, who is now severing his reunion with members of his family. However, he maintains that since my return, I have been having nightmare and psychological trauma. We are only looking up to government to know what they can be able to do. Because we know the education is compulsory for the older children. But the security is what we are thinking about. The incessant security challenge bedeviling the community is taking its toll on socio-economic activity of the people of the area. Honestly, the thing is not changed because yesterday and day before yesterday, the kidnapper is enter Pondogari and Lidugori. This problem is affecting our business. Even in the night when you want to sleep, you cannot sleep well. When it is 6 o'clock, everybody have gone in. You cannot come out early as early as you do before. No bank, no schools. Our children now are now at home. I'm a farmer. Now we don't know how we are going to cope up uh, this season. Similarly, even primary schools are not left out of the heat for the fear of attack. Life has not been all that easy because you do come to school panicking because we don't know what may happen. In compliance with the Niger State Government Directive, secondary schools across Muya, Shiruru, and Kagara in Rafi local government area of Niger State have been closed down. Musa Mikail, NTA News. 
And from Kagara in Niger State, we take you to Enugu, where Chinaye is next in line with more reports. Thank you, Hawa, and welcome to Enugu. To deal with the present Nigeria security situation, especially the menace of criminality and terrorism, some concerned individuals and key players in Enugu have advocated the cohesion and concentration of efforts, as well as maximum political, economic, social, and military force. They also suggested the implementation of the arms policy by the federal government. Analyzing the security situation in the country, key players said that Nigeria has been besieged by the outbreak of violence and conflicts which has over the years claimed lives and property. This, they said, is owing to the activities of kidnappers, armed robbers, bandits, Boko Haram insurgents, among others. Despite several efforts by the federal government to win the fight against these armed groups, some respondents believe that their activities have continued unabated due to unchecked proliferation of small arms, ammunition, and light weapons in the country. These categories of um, insecurity you have mentioned are becoming more pronounced. Although Nigeria's legal system does not encourage possession of firearms by persons other than security operatives and individuals licensed by police authority, there seems to be a rise in the cases of illegal possession of arms in the country. What then could be the implication of the illegal possession of arms? A situation whereby a brother will gun his brother down because they have a little land dispute. So I don't think we are matured enough as a people to liberalize the usage of arm by everybody. On the way forward to deal with the Nigerian security situation, key players have advocated the strengthening of the security architecture in the country to restore confidence in the security agents, provision of employment to unemployed youths, as well as the establishment of a national commission on small arms to serve as a legal framework for combating arms proliferation and monitoring of arms flow among other measures. On security matters, before now, cultism was practiced mainly in tertiary institutions. However, in recent times, these culprits have adopted new recruitment strategy of catching them young right from their primary and secondary school education. Chika Ugu takes a look at some of the factors that encourage cultism among young ones, its implications, and the way forward. It is a dangerous social trend where young people come together to form what is today known as cult groups to perpetrate violence and all the forms of destructive tendencies in higher institutions of learning. These groups are usually formed under the guise of promoting and protecting the interests of their members. It used to be a deadly organization, mostly found in higher institutions, but has now taken a different and disturbing dimension. It is common practice today to find secondary school students who are below the age of 18 belonging to these dangerous cult groups. Because in school is a, is, a, is, a, is a menace, which every one of us should join has to fight. The government, the parents, the teachers. If your child is not properly trained, the child is likely to join courts when he gets to school. One sure way to get rid of this practice, experts say, is a reorientation of values and proper family upbringing guided by respect for the sanctity of life. We involve ourselves more on school visitation across the federation, you know, to enhance the safety and security education. They all agree that all hands should be on deck to stem the tide and governments must not only create employment opportunities but put measures in place to fight the scourge in Enugu. Chikawu, NTA News. And that is our beat from here. Hawa is back to you in Abuja. Chine and sports now with Tamara Ebiwe. government has thrown its weight behind the candidature of the president of the Nigeria Football Federation, Amaju Pinik, at the upcoming FIFA Council elections in Morocco, March 12.
Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Youth and Sports Development, Nebolisa Anako, highlights the benefits to Nigeria should Amaju Pinik emerge victorious at the elections. If the NFF president wins this position, it will not be a victory for the federal government and all Nigerians alone, but the African continent. In cycling, 11 cyclists have commenced training at the velodrome, package A of the Moshu Dabiola National Stadium, Abuja, preparatory to this year's African Continental Championship Track Cycling, holding in Cairo, Egypt, March 10 to 14. The team, which comprises three males and eight females, will participate in junior, under 23, and elite categories. We have uh, Destiny, Onyobo, we have Deborah, uh, and uh, uh, Jessica. They are all uh, new talent discover and uh, by the grace of God, they will do Nigeria proud. The contingent will depart Nigeria March 8. Meanwhile, boxing promoter Bob Arum says Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury have agreed to a world title unification fight, although date and venue are yet to be decided. The all-British bout between 32-year-old WBC champion Fury and 31-year-old Joshua who holds the IBF, WBO and WBA titles, will see all four belts contested in a heavyweight fight for the first time. With sports updates, Tamara Ibiwe, NTA News. And that's Nationwide Today. We thank you for watching. Be part of our campaign against rape and rapist. Good evening.